This video corresponds with lesson three in unit 4C, which talks about how to graph quadratic functions that are written in intercept form. This is the third and final way that you'll learn how to graph a quadratic function, the first two being standard and vertex form. Once again, intercept form is just a different way that a quadratic equation can be written. It emphasizes the intercept, specifically the x-intercepts of the quadratic function. You can see the format at the top right of the screen y equals a, that a value out front once again will tell you which direction the graph opens as well as how wide or narrow it is, times in parentheses two factored out parts of the problem, x minus p, x minus q. Those two factors right there we are going to use to help find our x-intercepts. So this problem, these problems here are going to be a little bit different. While standard and vertex form, we went ahead and found the vertex first, intercept form, you actually have to find the intercepts first in order to go find the vertex. So let's see what I'm talking about here. I'm using the couple of examples from your current note packet. So if you're following along with that, you'll see that these problems here are exactly the same thing. So let's take a look at here y equals 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 1. The first thing that we're going to do here with this problem is establish what the a value is so we know kind of the shape of the graph and what direction it's pointing. The a value in this case is 2, which means it's going to open upward because it's positive. Because it's an a value with a magnitude greater than 1, this means this is going to be a narrower graph based on the 9 by 9 scale that I have for the coordinate plane. And what we're going to do now is, since it's written in this intercept form, we are going to focus on finding the x-intercepts first. So I'm going to focus on what I'm circling here in red, these two factors. All I'm going to do to find my x-intercepts is take each of those factors and set them equal to 0. So I'm going to take x plus 3, set it equal to 0. Take x minus 1, set it equal to 0. All we're going to then realize is we'll have x-intercepts at 3, excuse me, negative 3 comma 0 and 1 comma 0. So I'm taking what's in those sets of parentheses there, setting them equal to 0. That's what's going to allow me to find my x-intercepts. So then I'll go ahead and plot them. So here's negative 3, 0. Here's 1, 0. Now, think about how we establish how our graphs work in the first place. In both standard and vertex form, once you found the vertex, you knew where the middle of the graph was. You could put in that axis of symmetry, and then basically we were finding points that surrounded each side. They were an equal distance away. In this case, I found a, a pair of those points first. Now we need to work backwards and find the vertex. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to look at the two points that we have. What I want to find is the middle of those two points. So I want to look at, at the space in between. The middle of these two points, negative 3, 0, and 1, 0, is at the point negative 1, 0. What I'm going to do is put my axis of symmetry in where the middle of those two points exists. If you do it correctly, you'll see that the points will be an equal amount of spaces away. So we've got a point two spaces to the left and a point two spaces to the right of that axis of symmetry. Once you've established that, as you know, the x part of your vertex is the same thing as your axis of symmetry. So if you know the axis of symmetry in this case is negative 1, that means the x-coordinate of your vertex is at negative 1. So we already know that part. To find the y-coordinate of your vertex, we do the same thing that we've done in other problems. Take the x, go plug it into the problem. So you can use your calculator, do it in your head. But if I know the x value of the vertex is negative 1, that means the y value has to be negative 8. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that on my graph. And that gives me my vertex. So now I know where the graph basically starts off at, if you will. It gives me my minimum point, my bottoming out point. I have that. I have a pair of points already from the x-intercepts. Just so I can get a better structure for my parabola, I'm going to go ahead and find one more pair. So now we're going to go ahead and plug in another x value so I can get another reference point, And then I will mirror it over the line of symmetry to get that secondary point that goes with it. So again, when you pick another x value, you want to pick something that is close to your line of symmetry. I'm going to go ahead and pick x equals 0 because we haven't used it yet. 
Um, if you look, it's very close to my line of symmetry. And zero is a very nice number to use because we know it'll make our math, in a lot of cases, a little bit simpler. So if I plug in zero for x, I'm going to get negative six. So I'm going to plot that. That also happens to be our y-intercept. And we can mirror the cross. So one space to the other side, and that would get me negative two, negative six. I have my vertex and two pairs of points, so I can go ahead and make my parabola. So once again, we can establish that based on the way that the parabola is structured, we have a minimum. The low value of our graph is like y equals negative eight. Add an x value of negative one. So that's how you graph something in intercept form. Again, the keyword being intercept, you're finding the x-intercepts first. That's what's a little bit different about this format, unlike the other two where you found the vertex first. You find the x-intercepts, which will help you find where the vertex should be, and that allows you to make the structure of your parabola. So I'll walk through that again here with one more example. So again, these are the same examples from your note packet. Let's take a look here. At the other example, y equals negative 1 half times x minus 2 times x plus 6. We've got an a value of negative 1 half. It's going to open downward because it's negative. We also know since it has a magnitude of under 1, okay, we have a fraction that's under 1 in this case and 1 half, we are going to have a graph that's going to be wider in this case than our parent graph. So just something to keep in mind as you see the structure of this here. So once again, it's written in this intercept form because we have the two sets of parentheses here. So I'm going to go ahead and take those two sets of parentheses and set them equal to zero. Now, once again, I'm showing the work for this just so you can see where I'm getting the numbers from. Obviously, this is pretty basic math that you could do in your head. Just make sure, again, your signs are correct. I'm going to have two x-intercepts of 2 comma 0 and negative 6 comma 0. So I'm going to go ahead and plot those two points. So those are my x-intercepts. I'm now going to use those to help find my vertex. So again, in order to find my vertex, my vertex is in between, exactly in between the two x-intercept points that we have here. So to do that, we need to find the midpoint of where these two point of what these two points are. So the midpoint of two zero and negative six zero is where x is negative two. So I'm going to draw on that axis of symmetry just so I have that visual first. And again, we can look at and see. Negative 6, 0 is 4 spaces to my left. 2, comma 0 is 4 spaces to my right. So my line in symmetry is in the right spot. Since that's the case, my line of symmetry, again, matches the x-coordinate of my vertex. So we know the x is going to be negative 2. And then once again, we plug it back into the problem, the original problem that we have. Do some PEMDAS, use our calculators, go get the Y value. So if the X part is negative 2, the Y part is going to be positive 8. So my vertex is going to be a negative 2, comma 8. So all the way almost at the top of my graph here. So I have my vertex. I've got my pair of intercepts. I want one more pair so I can structure the graph nicely. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and pick something that is close to my line. So once again, I'm going to pick zero because zero is pretty close and it's in between points that I already have. If you generally pick points that are in between, again, it'll stay on your graph. Like I've emphasized in class, you can technically pick any points that you want. You can pick any X value in the world that you want. The closer you are to the line of symmetry, the more likely you are to get points that are on your graph that you can plot. The further away, more likely you're not going to be able to plot something. So once again, I'm going to choose zero for this. If I plug zero into the problem, it's going to spit out six. So I have the point zero comma six, and I can reflect it. Again, two spaces away from the right. Let's go two to the left. That'll put us at negative four comma six. That's my symmetrical point. I've now got my five total points, my vertex, and my other two symmetrical pairs. So I can go ahead and draw my parabola. And I have my graph. The way this is structured, so it has a top to it. We say it has a max. Our highest uh, y value with our max is at y equals 8 at the x value of negative 2. So once again, that's how you graph when something is written in intercept form. 
as I've emphasized with the other forms, it's a matter of recognizing how the equation is structured. Standard form has its own setup, vertex form has its own setup, and now you stay with this intercept form. It has its own setup to it. Based on the way it's set up, we'll tell you what information you can pull out right away to help find everything else that you need to possibly fill in. So once again, this is how you graph a quadratic function when it is set up in intercept form.